Dear Heroes of Drakenia, this is Haruki, your community manager for DSO, and I welcome you once again to the next chapter in the Dev Diaries series. Today I am super glad to welcome to this, you know, recording room a very important person within the team. Uh, because you have only met her through the English forums, actually, although she has been already with us for some months. Her name is Verena, and she's the captain of the crew, the lighthouse, and the diplomat. In other words, our very own producer for DSO. So, hey Verena, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, a little bit nervous of doing this, because English is not my mother language, but please, forgive my mistakes. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Uh, we normally ask this question to all the people who pass through this room, and of course you are no exception. So let's imagine that I don't know what a producer does on an online game, and you need to describe your job in a handful of sentences. So what do you do on a normal day of work? What are your duties or responsibilities? You know, that kind of thing. So on a day-to-day, -day, basically I have three important things to do that are meetings, plannings and analysis. Okay. Uh, but the main focus is actually to make sure that the game's running, that the team ha can work, that we have a planning, a focus and things that we want to do. And how we can do is make just a facilitator to actually make sure that everyone can do their job the best way mm -hmm. and we can deliver a great game to you guys. Exactly, yeah. So as I said, she's the kind of, you know, captain of the of the crew. Um, and as a captain of the crew, what would you say are the biggest challenges of command and, the, you know, the direction of an online game? Well, there's a major difference of between being a producer in a live game and in a game development who has not been released yet. Mm -hmm. uh, because you have to consider uh, that a live game is a live environment basically alive mm -hmm. and then you have to balance a lot of stuff you have to take care of the community you have to take care of stakeholders or bosses you have to basically be the guy with the plates spinning on the sticks mm -hmm. so make sure that not anything falls then the challenge for being in an online game is making it great making going forward mm -hmm. and keeping alive at the same time so it's balancing the future with the present mm -hmm. okay yeah that's true I see you doing this on a daily basis, you know, playing with the plates. <laughs> um, okay, another question that I also wanted to ask is that with the announcement that we are, well, we are still uh, working on a Chinese version for this, oh, uh, we witnessed some growing concerns within our community, you know, a lot of questions, a lot of where is this thing going and everything. So I wanted to uh, ask you if you can share with our players a little bit, you know, more of the vision or how is the team currently working on all those versions because we have China, we have Korea and of course we have global. So how do we, you know, play around with the plates so they don't fall around? Well, uh, we had, I started in a short term, but we have a bumpy ride with all the versions being released at the mm -hmm. same time, been trying to work on all these projects and without forgetting the global with the new projects and global and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Then we have to, right now we are looking on how can we position our team to better deliver this. Mm -hmm. So for, for example, for China, we are looking in the idea of having a precise team just for China mm -hmm. so they would be able to deliver everything there without affecting the other versions mm -hmm. and uh, for the Dragon Rise version for Korea we're looking into actually more similar to the global okay. so we're gonna have a lot of features that are shared between them and some smaller features that are particular for this version then that way we can actually balance to deliver everything on time with quality mm -hmm. so right now we are in the process to adjust this to make sure that we can deliver everything without the bumpy ride that we had in the beginning <laughs> yeah yeah it's true yeah we we know these guys that it happened around february march this is where the bumpy the bumpy months but don't worry its version has its own personality and it will remain so and we will work to make that uh, you know function <laughs> okay so now let's go with some questions from our community uh we did this on the forums we asked the people you know send us your questions for verena Remember, guys, that Greg and I, I, you know, we always host our very own uh, questions and answers section during Twitch. So if your question doesn't appear here, then don't worry, and you, know, you can send it in the next session. So Sendokai from the Portuguese Brazilian community, I don't know exactly from which country, uh, tell us that some players are worried about the future of the Baylor server because it does feel a little bit empty. They say they believe that um, those players should be relocated. So do you guys uh, are you thinking about this um, in any way? So uh, one of the focus of DSO is to, to expand, to grow. So moving players from one server that looks a little bit empty is not actually our focus. Mm -hmm. The idea is actually to bring more players to the game. So this is the plan that we have where we're working with our marketing team mm -hmm. to see which countries can we expand, how we can make campaigns on different countries that actually go to the servers. Okay. So the idea is not to relocate people or shut down servers. The idea is to actually improve, grow, and have more people play in this game. So 
let's not say that the idea is not relocating. Okay, so we are <laughs> not the other way around. <laughs> exactly, we are not relocating people. Uh, we are inviting people then. Uh, so no, no, we don't close Valor. We don't close Tigan. Okay, cool. Um, and Sharper for the same community, so Brazil, Portugal, asks whether um, Dragon's Dragon Online will become a fully platform or client game and will leave the browser world for good. I guess he's asking this uh, after the announcement that Firefox is going to stop supporting the Java plugins by the end of this year. So you can comment a little bit on that. So this is actually a topic that is not only on the Dragon's Dragon team, it's on all games that are browser games since Big Point has a lot of browser games. Yeah, that has, it has uh, that past. Yeah. <laughs> so we are planning on all levels on how to do this. We are, on Dragonsang, we have a little bit advantages because we are already a client game. Most of our players come from client games. Mm -hmm. But, uh, so this would be easier for us just to transition there. But we're still looking for the right process to do it. If we want to stay, we are analyzing if it's good for us to stay in the browser yet or not. How much effort is to create something in the browser or in the client. So that way we are still balancing the options. Mm -hmm. We have an uh, easy way out that will be going to, through direct to client, okay. but that's not established yet. So we're still in the process. Like I said, this goes for all big point games. Everybody's crazy. All producers are crazy and bringing, oh my God, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so so yeah, and I guess that this also ties up with the improvements that are going to be applied to the launcher. The, exactly. The way that, you know, you get into the game and everything. So yeah, that's cool. Okay. and. Okay, I'm sorry guys if you're, I am battering your names, but Kuba, Waras, Goose and Johnny8888 from the Italian community, the Bella Italia, are asking us uh, what are we planning to do with the situation of the Rangers, especially in PvE, you know, a lot of Rangers are finding it very hard to group and this naturally limits them a great deal, so... Yeah, uh, grouping is something that is really on our mind right now, is actually to make this game as most sociable as we ca it can be and balancing, of course, affects that. So uh, we are already looking on how can we do this. Balancing is something that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm, yeah. Usually for most games, if you go look on balancing classes, it's something that is either continue, so you never stop balancing yeah. classes, or you take a long time to deliver a big balancing on it. But you can already actually see some stuff that we are planning to release on the next sprint, on the next release, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, balancing a little bit tweaks that we are doing on the Ranger because we know that this is um, a little bit... Uh, we need uh, to improve that. Okay. And then we are already focused on this, so do not worry, we are looking at the balance of classes, especially to improve grouping, PvPs and everything, and mm -hmm. PvEs, exactly. Yeah. Uh, because I am a ranger, I like to play a ranger, so we cannot have that. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you see, so, so we do care about rangers and expect some changes there, we haven't forgotten about you. Okay, another question. Uh, Ginox and Sir Lauren, complain that the guild management is still lacking and too simplistic, so impossibility of knowing who are the inactive characters or people playing, limitations as to the numbers of maximum members, lack of guild uh, achievements. They want to know if there are some innovations coming along the way for this year, and if so, when? Well, when is always <laughs> hard to put it on, okay. but uh, I can guarantee that guilds is a huge topic of the team uh, mind. Mm -hmm. We are really want to work on that. We have smaller topics then can be like the, the amount of members on the, the, the guild can be adjusted faster. Yeah. There are things that might take more time to do it. Right now we are looking at all the, the ideas that we have for guilds, separate them in like smaller improvements that we can deliver faster okay. and like put it everything together in a big bundle to actually deliver a huge uh, content for guilds, mm -hmm. uh, changes and improvements that we want to have. So, but that when mm, it's hard to take, I cannot guarantee we are focused for to having this on 2016, Okay. but we do not have a precise date yet because we are still develop some designers, designs and designs, well, need estimation. So we need to finish one to actually get the second. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yeah, let's see that 2016, we'll see at least some improvements made yes, on that definitely. front. So yeah, that's that's very nice, actually. Uh, and it, of course, it ties up with all of this group mean and, you know, social. Social, let's yeah. go social. Exactly, <laughs> let's go social. Um, okay, from Poland, Kulavi Mao wants to know why the updates seem to fix only minor bugs, like the displayed animations, but not major bugs. Um, yeah, I guess that this is more of a perception of sorts, but could you offer more insight into this? Uh, so, as a player, I understand completely how bugs are annoying and you just get want to get screaming to everybody who developed the game. But right now, that when I step to the behind the screens, I actually find out that one bug, like one major bug, like let's say the brown death screen, something yeah. mm -hmm. that takes way more time to actually fix something because just to find out the root of the problem, 
it takes weeks if you have no idea what happened, how it's causing. Mm -hmm. Then you have to put a lot of people to investigate and you put tracking and you... So this is not actually that fast to fix. Right now we are trying to always have in every sprint or in every release something uh, new of, on the bug side, like let's get the most impacting ones and actually deliver them, mm -hmm. or like look for the quick wins and put a lot of those. So these are like, we are trying to fix as much bugs. One of the targets that we have internally is actually to reduce the bugs as much as we can, yeah. because well, it makes the playing better. <laughs> yeah, and because we like to see, you know, those lovely green numbers. <laughs> okay, cool, so, so yeah. Um, also, a lot of people, and really we last count already, so I'm not going to put all the names, are asking about the fifth class. Verena, is this ever happening? Well, that's again when it's hard to settle. Uh, when I got to the big point, we had some plans for the fifth class, but it, that was changing when we noticed that we have even more issues with the game before. Mm -hmm. Like, how can we release a new class if the old ones are not even balancing yet? Yeah. So it's something like we there are dependencies between the, the features that we want to release so right now we're like let's say that we are putting the house clean mm -hmm. make everything work before actually putting something like a fifth class that takes a lot of time for the team to develop and needs to be ready properly instead of just delivering something that's uh, yes, kind of not yes. that good I, i'm pretty sure a lot of people remember what happened with the steam mechanicus it exactly. was before your before your time but, <laughs> but you know i learned exactly. about this <laughs> exactly so we want to to avoid that from exactly mm -hmm. but yeah um quick idea would be that the fifth class is still this kind of uh, um, close combat quarter um character like light weapons or you're kind of assassin or something like that yeah uh, the design that we have right now is still this one but like i said uh I can say that this year will be really hard to deliver this, mm -hmm. uh, so maybe next year. And we are planning to have uh, still this focus because when we noticed that a lot of the community members said, yeah, we need more close range combat, mm -hmm. but we need to balance the other ones first. So the close range combat makes sense to actually a combat. <laughs> okay, perfect. And last question from you guys, Farkas5400 from a lovely Hungary is asking what happens with the content expansion? I guess that Farkas is referring maybe to a kind of a race of valor content expansion of sorts. So yeah, is the team planning to offer a level expansion or what's the priority on this point? Yeah, uh, just like I said, the priority right now is to put the house in order. Mm -hmm. So we are trying to fix a lot of stuff to improve a lot of systems that we already have. So the content expansion is not in our minds on this first time so mm -hmm. I would say that we're gonna be a little time before having that okay but we are delivering a lot of new system cool stuff to do mm -hmm. a lot of upgrades that you can do it so some major cooler things are coming in the way they're mm -hmm. not precise as a content expansion exactly like ba Baylor yeah. but a, a lot of cool things to actually do mm -hmm. uh, in the group in the game and events and a lot of stuff like this exactly especially the events because we cannot say so much about it right now but there are like some events new events in the pipeline which is you know a form of content expansion somehow so yeah cool and before we leave because you know this interview is getting too long and i know that you have a lot of plates to <laughs> spin, <laughs> to spin uh, today is there anything you would like to tell you know uh, our community as a final uh, farewell so to say uh, i would say that i understand our concerns and screen needs and like i said i'm a player uh, but we are right now, since I got here, I've been talking a lot of the community managers on how to introduce the community requests. Mm -hmm. It's something that takes time. Some of the requests are, hey guys, you need to be real here. You cannot deliver something like a new race in a month. Mm -hmm. But uh, we want to deliver stuff. So every release, we are looking for something that actually is good for you guys, that you requested. Mm -hmm. So this is something that is working more close between community and production to actually have the request from the community go inside your pipeline and be delivered and not just like postponed every time. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. That's uh, something that we want to avoid, of course. <laughs> okay, so perfect. So, uh, Verena, thanks a lot for giving us a few minutes of your time. Uh, we hope this is not the last time we have you uh, We have you here. Maybe we can have you, you know, as a special guest in our Twitch sessions or hold another questions and answers soon. I'm up for everything. Whatever Just say it. <laughs> whatever fits you best. <laughs> okay, Hero, so the interview arrived to its end. Uh, did you find it interesting? Do you have any more questions you would like us you know, to answer? So yeah, type them down in the comment section down below and we'll answer them to the best of our abilities. Uh, remember that YouTube subscriptions makes us incredibly happy, so don't forget to follow us here, uh, but you can also do it so on Twitch, on Facebook and on Twitter. So see you in the next episode.